Oh, all right, now can we pop them in here? We want to be breaking this apart, right, don't we? So if you come to an edge of it and give it a smack, it's going to start breaking down like that, right? These are the size particles that we want. Right, um, I've got dustpan and brush just there, but we want to try and reduce the possibility of this going everywhere, right? So, you'll see that that will really spray out. We don't want it all over the garden. We're, you can imagine the preciousness of this, right? Particularly yeah. in its time. So it's just it's just more effective with this over really. Stop. Yeah, get this bust up like this, right? Okay. And then um, about that small. Yeah. Okay. So so like that 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 piece is about as large as it should be. Yeah. And then what we'll do is we'll just fill a graphite crucible full of it, yeah. okay? Right. And uh, so that'll be sitting there waiting for us. And anything that doesn't uh, want to go in the graphite crucible, we'll leave as a rock. If um, when you're ready. Oh right, that's, that's all. I never thought about that. Uh, we've done some grain milling and stuff, and I never thought, you know, you just spread a leather skin underneath and it will collect. Yeah, and then you've got, you've got a starting grid. That's going in. That's going there. What, were they already making it? Right. Once you've mixed them all in, what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of those crucibles are pretty well in the furnace ones. Crude way of doing something, but... Put less on there. Yeah, so that, uh, yeah, but start by breaking that down. Bad, then. Right, that's a little bit of If you start breaking through too much, obviously, move the flesh bit over, right? Come lay you an egg, and uh, we've got breakfast as well. <laughs> <laughs> well. That is good, yeah. We have done a good job of that, actually. We have. You've done a lovely job of that, yeah. Do you want someone to hold it? No, I've got it, thanks. Is it always in round, is it all always found in balls or what? Um, yeah, pretty much, and yeah, they get quite big as well. It's not necessary to have the pair of these, but it's just... Oh no, it's doing it right though, isn't it? Well, it's a way. There's many ways. I personally don't choose to like this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... Uh, won't be too long before we start seeing sparks that now have the potential the landing and igniting on that. Um, I would expect that to be lit in under a minute. But these bits generally they're a little bit too small to do this with so what you what makes sense of these is if you get something like a big shell put some glue in and glue them into it then you've got a bigger yep. wall or, uh, because they're just too small to do that with but these two are probably in the bag of being um, potentially usable. So that's the strongest spark. Yeah, it's your strongest spark. Well, we're well done. Right. Clever bug.
He's put it out. And when can you do it? <laughs> when did the uh, Bronze Age start? Then? Bronze Age started. Um, it's hard to say really. It depends where you are. Because everywhere, wherever it starts, it's in a different place. So, you know, you could say um, 3,800 years ago. Is it a stamp? Just keep your ember going well. I'll run over the pan. I think I've got some um, some dry ones over there. We're fine. You, you all right? Yeah. Put it slightly more up, so it's slightly above your nose. Then you're blowing up and smoke go over your shoulder. And if you need to tilt it, remembering that um, heat so goes upwards. So there's so you're, above. you're yeah. working intelligently. Keep it cupped and tight in there, so it's got an environment where it grows instead of gets separated. Take on. Oh, All right, now can you pop him in here? And just gently open and close. Don't move that tube, right? See that? Put a bit more uh, hay in there, please. Yes, Jack. mate. Move it to the top. Sticky plaster, it's wonderful. Use it as a, use it as a plaster. Oh, right, okay. The sterile, good turning that down, getting your resin out of it. Yeah, well, me and, me and the lads, if we, if we if we fell in in the spring, we'll put cuts in the um, in the in, in a few of the standing ones and, and, and take the sap off. Just have a drink of that. It's just it's so tasty. But the other trouble with um, malachite is when it gets hot, it begins to. Uh, Spit. Really? Yeah, it'll, you'll hear little pings as it, it's like it's like shattering, and they can leave company at fairly um, high speed. That's why I'm making a little. Is that a, a lid for the? Okay. Wow. Yeah, I'm just breaking all the rules. With <laughs> with that much grog, you can dry it straight in the fire. Um, you shouldn't be able to. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was just saying, you know, it's not really, there's fine china, so. That's fantastic. It's great, 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 great grandmother's fine china. <laughs> Have you been rotating it or just? I did. It right, I've turned it once. Okay. What will be handy is that the tin will go first. Yeah. And that'll act like a little wet, wet um, uh, puddle. Ah, yeah. And it'll yeah, yeah. suck everything else into it. Got you. Because that melts at 250 degrees. Yeah. So it really gives that copper a nice little persuasion.
bottoms it. Wasn't that's just going to percolate down to the bottom, make the bloom, drop the bloom at the bottom, isn't it? Basically, yeah. yeah. So what I did is I had a crucible yeah. and it filled up with malachite. Yeah. And I roasted the malachite yeah. in that crucible. Yeah. Once it had all gone black, I turned it over yeah. and I poured it in. Isn't it? And yeah. now that's percolating down. Yeah. Up here it's not hot enough. Right. Like there's too much oxygen. So what it's going to do is it's going to go down here. It's going to accumulate around the entrance to that, where it's going to be nice and hot, um, and um, and uh, that's going to burn off all, all of the um, all of the uh, copper oxide and leave a sort of copper behind. Yeah. There will be a slag, so there'll be an amalgamation of things. It, it was rubbish charcoal, right? But what you would have had if that charcoal was hot is all of this would have melted and pondered into a pool at the bottom. And it would have had what we know as a slag sitting on top of it. And we would have just hammered the slag away. I'm kind of grateful that it didn't work so that we could see the difference in charcoal because that's not something I would have been aware of before. Right, okay. Yeah. You know? It's not something that crops up often because people don't generally make rubbish charcoal. But that looks like good copper to me. It's certainly got a weight to it. What was it about the charcoal that was bad? It hadn't been um, carbonised properly, so it hadn't oh, done yeah, a complete right. burn. Oh, so okay. therefore it wasn't actually charcoal, it was sort of like more like wood. Black wood. Yeah. We lost wax. What we could do is oh, we could take a bit of this to the anvil and give it a hammer. You do it. Yeah. Into a bit better light. Wow! I'm dealing with pure copper. Look. That's incredible. Out of the malachite, so um, that can be sort of smelted into the bits that you make today, and you've got yeah. a little element of like the past going into that it. That would be so cool. It's so amazing to see it deform. You put rocks into fire, and you come out with metal. Go back sometimes. <laughs> oh, gentler, gentler. Gosh, I gotta think that's copper. I'm just, it's funny, you wanna smack it real hard. <clears throat> like, you know, because I'm like, I've got a hammer. It's there. The harder I smack it, the more it will spread. I want it to spread, therefore I should smack it really hard. It's like, nope, gentle. Gentle. We're drowning in copper, man. I mean, comparatively speaking. Much like that uh, Germanic soldier drowned on a toothbrush. Toothbrush. <laughs> Hi guys, this is uh, Joseph and Joseph. They've been along this weekend and they've spent two days bronze casting. Not just bronze casting, but literally walking back three and a half thousand years into the footprint of the technology when mankind literally put stone into fire and created bronze. Well, you've done really well and um, throughout the experience you've uh, explored many techniques and hopefully that will carry you along swiftly along your journey thank you but don't be in too much of a rush to get into <laughs> the modern world right right it's true because no. you're better off in the stone age the, the course has given us a lot of material to uh, to digest and to go and practice and to experiment some more when we go home so thank you very much it's been awesome yeah well just remember a little bit of health and safety with this stuff because things do like to go bang. Eye protection hands protection yeah. everything protection i will yeah. uh, yeah. watch where i'm brandishing this thing and only uh, stick it into trojan warriors and not not you not joseph 
we'd really encourage you to go ahead and check out his channel. We've left a link in the description below so that you can see all of his stuff about experimental archaeology, survival, and in general, really, really, really cool stuff. In particular, check out the video where he shaved with a piece of obsidian. So apparently you could shave in the Stone Age. Well, we could finish that video with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Have you, got, have you got the shard? Let's, uh, I've got the shard. Shard bear grease? Indeed. Yeah. Let's go do it. Yeah? <laughs> sounds awesome. Maybe you know you'd like to watch it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to check out Will Lord's channel, and we'll see you next time.